Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to train you how to run faster, like Sonic the Hedgehog. So if you want to run faster, and I'm presuming you do as you're watching this video, then there are two areas that you should focus on. One is the biomechanics, that's the technique of your running, you know, the way you're um, hitting the floor with your feet one after the other and moving your arms, those are the basics of running. Um, and the other part is the muscular force that you're able to exert on the ground. So running is very much to do with the amount of force you can exert on the floor in the short amount of time that your feet are touching it, because obviously they need to then launch off again very quickly. So starting with the biomechanics, so what's the best way to run in order to increase your speed? And are you currently running in the best way possible? One thing I've often wondered is why in animes and also Sonic the Hedgehog, people tend to run with their arms behind their back like that. I mean, it looks sort of cool until you try it yourself and then it really doesn't look cool. It makes you look like a bit of a knob. It looks cool, but one thing I can tell you is the reason that they do that is not because it's at all based on reality. There is no advantage to running with your arms behind your back. There's some theory that ninjas would have done it so they were ready to grab a sword, or that maybe they're running so fast it's blowing their arms behind them and they can't bring them forwards, but then that makes them sound quite weak, bearing in mind how powerful their legs obviously are. At the end of the day, there's no advantage to keeping your arms behind you. In fact, swinging your arms is one of the most effective ways to increase your speed. And if you want to get an immediate speed boost, then my recommendation is just be a bit more mindful of the way you're moving your arms as you run. Really pump them. Don't swing them up too high. Keep your arms, hands open so that they're aerodynamic, but really feel the power as you swing your arms back and forth and that will drive you forwards much faster. The other thing you need to do in order to run faster is get gravity on your side. And that means that basically you need to essentially be falling forwards as you're running. So that's the part that the animes and Sonic the Hedgehog depictions have correct because they're always leaning very far forwards and that is the correct way to run and this is relatively um, new information for a long time people used to run striking the ground with their heels first leaning back slightly as they did and this is partly a result of footwear we wear shoes with large padded heels and so it's more comfortable to strike with our heels but this is actually incorrect because when you do that your center of gravity is behind your legs that means you can't use your um, feet and your knees as they're actually designed to use Actually, your, your foot and your knee and your ankle are all supposed to compress directly underneath your body, almost like a spring. And if you look at a cheetah or a leopard, you'll see they have these actually weird feet where their toes are like that. And then the upper portion, the, the back portion of their feet stick up like so. And this allows the foot to become an additional hinge in that spring, giving you even more power. And the human foot can do the same thing, but not if you're reaching your heel forwards. So earlier I recorded some footage to demonstrate Say hello, Adam, from the past. So there are two techniques called chi running and pose running, and both of these teach people to lean more forwards and to essentially tip forwards until they're gonna fall and then put their leg out in front of them to stop themselves from doing that so that they can keep on plowing forwards. And if you do this, then you're not only running faster because you've got gravity pulling you forwards, but also because your feet are acting more like a hinge and your center of gravity is directly above your knees. This has also reduced your likelihood of damaging your knees. Your footwear is also obviously really important, not only because certain shoes have got springy materials in the soles and things, but also because of the amount of sole that they have in general and the connection this gives you to the floor. So you can have structured shoes, which are more supportive and tend to have bigger heel to toe drops, or you can have minimalist shoes. And minimalist shoes are essentially the minimal amount of material between your foot and the ground and that allows your foot to bend the way it's supposed to like that remember and also means you can actually use your feet muscles slightly as you stride it encourages you to strike with a mid or four foot strike so that you're hitting the ground with the ball of your foot as you're leaning forwards or with the middle of your foot as you're leaning forwards rather than reaching forwards as we discussed with your heel so if you want to immediately fix your technique slightly look for a slightly more minimalist shoe and that should improve your ability to naturally run slightly more leading forwards. There's two other tricks we can use to quickly fix our biomechanics. One is to increase the height of our center of gravity, because studies show that actually, the higher your center of gravity, the faster you can run, because you've got more gravity on your side as you fall forwards. Someone very tall with heavy shoulders 
is able to lean forwards and gravity pulls them in the correct direction. They put their feet out just in front of them and they run faster as a result. So it's not just the extra leg length that makes you faster when you're taller, it's also that heightened center of gravity. Your center of gravity, by the way, is normally just below your navel. So how can you increase your center of gravity? Well, this is just a theory, probably wouldn't work, but I'm thinking beef up your shoulders, heavier shoulders, higher center of gravity, lean forwards as you run. Probably not gonna notice a huge difference there, but something interesting. And it's another reason not to wear overly heavy footwear. The other way we can fix our biomechanics immediately, and this is quite cool, is with something called overspeed training. And I love the name overspeed training. It's like, what are you doing today? Oh, nothing, just overspeed training. So overspeed training basically means that you're running faster than you normally could. And you do this by running down a hill, by having someone tow you in a car, and you've got like something attached to your waist, or even on a treadmill, turning up the speed to a very high setting. Or they need to be careful with that because treadmills actually do affect your biomechanics and they impact on the amount of muscle you need to use because the floor is moving underneath you. But anyways, the idea behind overspeed training, whichever method you use, is that you're running faster than you normally can, and this you're teaching your body the way it needs to move to go at that speed. So you're creating movement patterns for your nervous system. It's a very cool idea. I'm not sure if it definitely works, but it's certainly a cool thing to try, assuming you don't mind falling over and being dragged behind a car. It is a little bit dangerous and um, I can't be held responsible if that happens to you. I've never tried it. Running down hills though, that's a fairly normal thing to do and probably safe enough. So now that we've talked about the biomechanics, the next thing we need to think about is how we're gonna generate that amount of power. And one way to do this is quite simply with weight training. Weight training will allow you to increase the fast twitch muscle fibers in the legs and also in the shoulders. So I talked about the importance of swinging your shoulders as you run and that focusing on that can give you an instant speed boost. So why not? also give them extra strength by training them in the gym. One move I particularly like for doing this is called a dumbbell runners. I got them from Sylvester Stallone's book, Sly Moves. You actually hold dumbbells in your hands and you move one forwards in a kind of hammer curl and the other one, you do a tricep extension. And at the same time, you're driving it upwards, thereby training the anterior deltoids. So that'll build you up bigger shoulders and you also can train them in all the other normal ways that you train your shoulders and that'll help you generate more power in your upper body for running. But obviously more important is the power that we're generating in the lower body. And that means we want to train our posterior chain. You can do that obviously with running. And if you sprint, then of course that will train the fast twitch muscle fibers. Um, the basics of training, I've said this before, are said specific adaptation to imposed demands. That basically means that your body adapts to get good at whatever you make it do a lot. So if you want to be a better sprinter, sprint a lot. And explosive jumping also will train those fast twitch muscle fibers in the posterior chain. Another exercise that's supposed to be very good for this is kettlebell swings. And of course you've got your squats and your deadlifts. All of that will give you more explosive power that you can exert on the ground. Of course, just sprinting isn't the most exciting way to get better at sprinting though. So if you want to increase the challenge, one thing we can do is to add more resistance. And one cool way I found to do that is to attach a parachute to my back. The parachute I bought is actually not the most effective. It doesn't offer that much resistance, but it certainly looks cool in a video. Either that or it looks really weird. And I think people were staring at me when I was filming this. Um, there are other more normal ways to add resistance. So running up a hill, we had running down a hill, now we've got running up a hill. Running on sand, of course, or even running through shallow water, uh, which will also force you to develop more strength. And then when you go and sprint without that added resistance, doosh, you'll be like lightning, like greased lightning. I don't know why I'm quoting grease in this video, that's weird. There are also a ton of cool exercises and drills specifically for training the muscles that you use in sprinting. One is marching A's, um, one is high knees, where you just literally beat the ground with your knees, getting them as high as you can. And that is perfect for generating that force in the short amount of time that your feet touch the ground. Um, you can push things along. There are plenty of exercises like that. And if you type speed drills into Google or YouTube, then you'll find a whole plethora of them coming up. One cool exercise I came across is something called ass kicks, where you're basically standing on one leg and then you jump in the air and kick your own butt with the leg that you just jumped off. Um, that's an exercise that will kick your ass. And the idea, of course, is that you're exerting as much power and force on the ground as possible, uh, once again, in order to push yourself off when you do come to running. Your calves also play a big role in running, of course, and another cool exercise I found to train those is calf jumps. So here, you're jumping off the floor without bending your knees or any other part of your leg, 
literally just using your toes to exert enough force to propel yourself into the air. Looks ridiculous, but it's quite a cool workout for your calves and a unique case of a bodyweight workout for your calves. And if you're gonna be using more minimalist shoes, then you can also increase your speed by strengthening the muscles in your feet because your feet actually have a lot of muscles in them and they can be used to push off the ground as well. In fact, your toes can even somewhat grip the ground if you have a thin enough sole. And the best way to train your feet, um, unless you are gonna get into toe yoga, toga, which I have not looked into myself, is to try running barefoot on sand, in which case the muscles in your feet will be working a lot harder. And as you're on sand, you're not very likely to injure yourself. You can also try those minimalist glove shoes like the Vibram Five Fingers, but you need to be very careful when doing that because you've been running in regular shoes probably your whole life and you're not used to running completely barefoot yet. If you run too fast or too hard right at the start, then you can risk injury and I actually hurt my knee that way. It took a couple of years to get better. Stretching might also be able to help you run faster um, by actually loosening up the antagonistic muscles. So if you're running, um, you use your calves in order to push off the ground, but meanwhile, your um, tibialis anterior, which is the muscle on the front of the shin, the one that causes uh, pain when you get shin splints, that actually pulls your foot in the other direction and actually offers a little bit of resistance when you're running. So if you stretch that muscle, then you can actually make it looser, thereby enabling yourself to exert more force with your calves as you push yourself off. The key though is not to train the tibialis anterior before you run, as actually some studies suggest that stretching before you run can actually slow you down and increase your chance of injury by reducing your control over those muscles. So what you need to do instead is just stretch the rest of the time, uh, not during your running, but just after your running or in your uh, workouts when you're not actually on the track. And this will then make those muscles offer less resistance when you do come to running again. And if you subscribe to the notions of muscle control as outlined by Maxic, then theoretically you could gain conscious control over the tibialis anterior and relax it with your own mind as you exert more force with the calf. But that's top level stuff and I don't think we're gonna really get into that now. Of course, you then also have the amount of energy that you have for running and you need to think about things like your VO2 max and your circulation to make sure that you can keep up that top speed for as long as possible. Uh, but that's something that we're gonna talk about in a future video because it's beyond the scope of this one. So hopefully you found some slightly different ideas there to what's in a lot of the other videos on running faster. Some things like stretching your uh, calf muscles and things like using overspeed training maybe you haven't heard of before. But the most practical things are just use that running where you're leaning more forwards, try out more minimalist shoes and power through with your shoulders. If you can do that and train your legs at the same time, then you should be able to see a decent increase in speed. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found that interesting and useful, something a bit different. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any other ideas that I missed on how to run faster or if you have any questions for me and I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. Uh, stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Obviously Christmas is coming up, so there might be a short break, but I'll try and get something out pronto when I get back. I'm gonna be doing some workouts. I've still got that video on Bruce Lee's philosophy on the way. And I'm also gonna be doing a video on uh, transcranial direct current stimulation, various other interesting things. So if that sounds good, then please stay tuned, subscribe, maybe like this video, maybe share it because that'll help me an awful lot. And Merry Christmas and I hope you have an awesome new year and I will see you soon. Bye for now.